Let's talk about asset bundling and how we can install Tailwind CSS or any other front-end library or package within our Laravel application. This way we don't have to use the CDN to load Tailwind CSS or any other front-end library. If you completed the Learn PHP the Right Way series, then you should be a little bit familiar with asset bundling since we covered the basics of a tool called Webpack in that course. Laravel has support for Webpack and you are free to use it, however in this course we will be covering and using another tool called Vite. Vite is a modern build tool that focuses on speed and performance. Laravel provides an elegant integration with Vite to manage your assets efficiently. So let's see how we can use Vite in our Laravel project. First step is to make sure that you have the Node.js and NPM installed. You can go to the Node.js documentation and follow the instructions there to get it installed, or if you're using Laravel Sail, then uh, you're in luck because Laravel Sail does come with Node and NPM installed out of the box. So once you figure out the Node.js uh, problem, then we need to run the npm install command to install the dependencies that are stored in our package.json file. So if we open that up, we see that we have three dependencies by default here. We have Axios, Laravel Vite plugin, and Vite. So let's open the terminal. I'm going to do vendor bin sale shell to open up the Docker container. And then in here, I'm going to run npm install. And then after npm install, we're going to run npm run dev. But before we do that, Let's look at the Vite configuration file, which is found under the root directory of your application, and it is called vite.config.js. So if we open that up, we see that this is defining the Vite configuration here, and we're using Laravel plugin here to specify the entry points for the application's JavaScript and CSS files, and these JavaScript and CSS files are under the resources directory, as you can see here. So if we open the resources CSS, we have that right here. And the JS, we have it right here as well. Now, if you were building an SPA, you could technically remove the CSS file from here and simply import that within your app.js file. But we're just going to leave it as is for now, uh, since we're not building an SPA. Also notice that if we open the app.js, we have this import bootstrap uh, line in here. And if we open the bootstrap file, this just imports and configures the Axios instance for your Laravel application. Axios is basically a promise-based HTTP client for JavaScript. Now to load or link the assets in our HTML or in our Blade templates, we can use the Vite Blade directive for that. So within our layout blade, inside our HTML head element, we can reference the app.js and CSS files from the resources directory using the vite directive. So we can do something like vite and pass an array which will list our CSS and JavaScript files. Again, if you were doing SBA, then you would import your CSS within your JavaScript. So in that case, you wouldn't need to reference CSS file in here. But since we're not doing that, we're going to reference it here. So we'll do resources, CSS, app, CSS, and resources, JS, app, dot JS. What this directive does is that it automatically detects the VIT development server and it enables hot module replacement, also called HMR, which allows us to see changes in real time without refreshing the page manually. The cool thing about this directive is that it knows what to do regardless if we run npm run dev or npm run build when building for production. npm run dev is the command that runs the vite development server, which is useful for local development, and the build command is useful for production to actually build version and bundle the assets. One other thing that you may have noticed here, we have this refresh where we're passing true here to Laravel plugin, this essentially makes it so that every time we save uh, a file like our uh, blades template, if we make a change and save, it will automatically reload the page for us. All right, before we test this out, uh, let's install the Tailwind CSS so that we don't have to load it from the CDN in here. So in fact, I'm going to get rid of it from here. 
and instead we're going to install the tailwind css using the npm command so we're going to do npm install tailwind css and we need post css as well as auto prefixer post css is basically used to transform css using plugins and tailwind is essentially a post css plugin auto prefixer is another post css plugin which adds vendor prefixes to your css rules automatically which ensures cross-browser compatibility so once those are installed then we're going to run the npx command to generate the configuration file for the tailwind css so we're going to do npx tailwind css init this is going to initialize the tailwind css uh, configuration file and it will create tailwind config js file so if we open that up right here we see that this is where we can configure our tailwind css we're going to add the paths to our blade and javascript files within the content section in here because the blade and javascript files are the files where we may be using tailwind css classes so we need to tell tailwind about that so we're going to first specify that our blade templates will be within resources and then we'll basically match to any blade template here that ends with blade and we'll do the same thing for javascript so we'll do resources match to any file that ends with javascript within the resources directory or any subdirectory under it if you were using other type of templates maybe react or view then you'd expand this content accordingly to suit your needs but for our purposes we're only going to have the blade templates and the javascript files that are going to contain our tailwind css classes now we're not going to change much of the other configuration in here since this is not a tailwind specific course but you can read up on tailwind documentation if you do decide to use tailwind for your own projects and want to know more you can extend colors here you can change them you can add fonts plugins and so on all right next we need to add a few tailwind directives to our css file so let's open our application css file and add tailwind base tailwind components and tailwind utilities and that's it now basically we should have tailwind working for our application so let's run npm run dev to start the vis development server let's open the browser visit localhost and we see that it's actually not working uh, we do see the page here but the tailwind styles are now being applied the reason for this is because remember tailwind css is a post css plugin so we need to create a post css configuration file in the root of our project directory and then vit will automatically apply it so we essentially need to create another file here called postcss.config.js and we need to enable the tailwind uh, css in here as a plugin so we are going to paste in this snippet of code here and we're essentially saying that we have the tailwind css and the auto prefixer plugins and then let's restart this and now our page should load without issues and as you can see as soon as i open the browser it automatically refreshed because uh, it does that now on save now if we go back and change something in the layout maybe we're going to add hello world in here and then save and go to the browser we see that it's already available here without me explicitly refreshing the page in fact i think there is a command that automatically generates the post css config as well so if we remove this and uh, let's get rid of this and we'll do npx tailwind css init and do dash p this is going to create the post css file as well as the tailwind configuration file so if we run this we see that the tailwind configuration file already exists but it did create the post css configuration for us so if we open that up we see that these two things are there automatically so just wanted to basically show you what happens if you miss this option and you create the tailwind css configuration uh, on its own when you open the browser it's not going to work because you will need the post css configuration as well which you can either create manually or you can run the command with dash p option 
All right, another issue that you might come across with is with the hot module reloading or hot module replacement. Uh, basically, when you have the HMR enabled, um, it automatically refreshes the page on save, so you don't have to do that manually, which is pretty awesome, right? We saw that it was working in my case. However, it may not work in your case depending on how your local environment is set up and whether you're using Laravel sale or something else. If you come across with some kind of issue where you're getting some errors that it's not able to load the vit files or some other files, you're getting some kind of console JavaScript errors in your developer tools when you open it on uh, your browser, then you can try to play around with the vit server configuration options. So you could go to the vit config.js and in here you could add the server option and then do HMR and then within HMR you could set the host to localhost and try to run the npm run dev again and see if that helps your situation. So if I run this, this is going to work for me regardless. So if I open and refresh, we see that it still works. Now if I set this to something else like localhost1 and save and go here and refresh, we will see that it's not going to work. And if I open the console, we're getting this kind of error. So if you're getting something similar where it's not able to load this client or app CSS or app JS uh, JavaScript errors, then try to play around with your server HMR configuration options. Now you can of course refer to documentation to see some of the other available options uh, to see what you can play around with. But if it doesn't work, one other thing that you can try is if you're using Docker, try to run npm commands outside of the Docker container within your host machine. That would mean that Node.js and npm would have to be installed on your host machine as well. And in that case, uh, you may be able to run the npm run dev afterwards. And once you do that, then the HMR might work and you may not have any issues. All right, so I'm gonna remove this since it's not needed in my case. And next, let's talk about how we can reference to other assets like images. One way is to store images in public directory within here. For example, let's maybe change the logo that's used in our navigation component. So let's open the nav component. And within the nav component, we're loading the logo from this URL. So instead, maybe we want to load the logo from our public directory. So maybe we had something like images logo.png and I'm going to paste in my logo in here. Uh, we'll rename this to just logo and we need to put this within the images directory. So let's put it within the images directory and now let's open the browser and sure enough, we see that it works. Another way would be to store the assets within the resources directory and then have Vite process and version it properly during the build process. So let's move our images directory to our resources directory. We're going to take it out of the public entirely. And then within our blade template, we're going to reference this using the asset method on the Vite facade. So we'll do Vite asset pass the resources slash images slash logo dot png and this should work in fact we don't need the fully qualified name here uh, just the beat should work as expected let's open the browser refresh the page and we see that it still works if we inspect element here we see that it's loading the image from the resources directory now this only works because we are in development mode. We are running npm run dev. However, if we cancel this out and run npm run build instead, which builds for production, that's what we would use for production, it would not work. So if we open the browser and refresh the page, we see that we're getting error that uh, the vit manifest is not able to locate the logo.png. That is because Vite won't automatically version and process assets that are not included or referenced within the CSS or JavaScript files. We can open the manifest 
JSON uh, file that is automatically generated and placed within the public build directory. This file is essentially like a map. It maps this path right here to the built, compressed, and versioned asset that is now available under the public directory. So it essentially maps this to this file right here. And this file is available under the public build assets. And you can see it's right here. But as you can also see, we don't have an entry here for the logo. We just have one for CSS and one for JavaScript. Now, if we, for some reason, import our logo within our JavaScript, then it's going to work. So if we go to app.js and we did something like import images logo.png and save, and then we did npm run build and visit the browser, we see that everything is working. And that's because now uh, Vite is uh, basically detecting that this uh, file is in use and it's putting it into that manifest. So if we open that, now we have that entry right here and it's referencing to this file. And this file has been properly copied or built under the build assets. Now for a few images, this is fine. You might already be importing them in your JavaScript or CSS files, which would automatically be versioned and included in the build process. But if you want to version all assets uh, that you have, you could make Vit aware of these assets by importing all the images or other assets within your app.js. So we could do something like instead of importing this one image, we could do import meta globe and pass uh, a list of uh, paths to where our assets uh, are located. In our case, we only care about the images, so we'll do images and basically load all the images under the images directory. If we save that, run npm run build again, refresh the page, we see that it still works. All right, I think this is good enough to get you familiar with Vite and Frontend. Rest, you can dig into it yourself based on your needs. Then depending on what you decide to use for Frontend, you can configure Vite with React, with Vue, and so on. It is up to you what you want to use. You're not obligated to use Vite at all. You can use Webpack or just simply use CDN for a project or demonstration purposes. It doesn't really matter. This course is not front-end oriented, so we are not going to go in too much detail. I just wanted to cover the basics and give you the base foundation so that you could go and explore more. We will, however, cover and get to the forms and form requests in time. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my lessons. If you do, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Until next time, happy coding.